We're doing something I have never done before. Sky really. I lied. I've done this plenty of times. The interesting thing about this one. Good morning, everyone. Janice is like right over, right over here. Can't really hold on. Hold on. Here. Wave. There you go. Yodi's on the bed. Good, Today we are doing something I have never done before. Sky really. I lied. I've done this plenty of times. So, the interesting thing about this one is it's Sky Reezy the first time after me having COVID. And it's been long enough that it should have no issues, shouldn't have any kind of adverse reactions, stuff like that. Now, what I am dealing with, and my doctors have told me that it's it's one of those gray areas that is not definitive, but it's most likely. After me getting COVID, I've been having a little bit more issues with my stoma. And I've never had ulcers on my stoma, like, near my skin. Like, on my actual stoma, yes, and that is just from the chronic prolapsing in and out. My surgeon has said that is completely normal for people in my situation that have that chronic prolapse symptoms and issues. But yeah, you can develop some ulcers and stuff like that. And he said, that's okay, because guess what? I'm going to remove all that piece of colon anyways. So it's not really a big deal. <coughs> now, those have never caused me any kind of pain or any kind of significant issues. Recently, I started just feeling this in my bag after a day or two. Like, I just felt a really, really sharp pain. And it's gotten progressively worse. And I never leave my bags more than three to five days. That's the average that you have to change your bags. Obviously, sooner if there's any kind of issues or if you just want to or, like, if you start leaking or just whatever. So mine this time I went about four days and I was just in so much pain. I was like, babe, you know, let's change it, let's let's get it done. We did, and I noticed that I have an ulcer on my left side that it spans from my skin and its continuation all the way onto my stoma itself. And it was something that I've never had anything like that before. And again, it is pretty damn painful. So I instantly take a photo of it upload it to the portal of my surgeon and called and asked. He wasn't available, so I got through to one of the doctors in the same practice. And they said that it doesn't look anything emergent, that it's perfectly fine. Yes, it may be painful, so just wait for my doctor to call back. But they're like, it's nothing in an emergency. They have to go to the hospital or stuff like that. He called me the next day and he just told me, hey, unfortunately, this is something that can happen with people with Crohn's disease and stomas. But he's like, you have never had it all this time. So why is this happening out of nowhere? He's like, if, if it would have happened, it should have happened already. With the shock of, you know, going through the surgery and everything, he's like, it most likely would have happened already. So what he told me is that this could be one of those very weird, rare side effects of getting COVID. A lot of people have had those symptoms where they didn't have an issue before. They got COVID and now they have a new health issue. That can't happen with COVID. <coughs> Crazy virus, we still don't fully understand it. So he said this could be that. And I am in a lot of pain. I've been in contact with him for about a week and a half, two weeks almost, and it's just the pain is there. It's getting worse some days. Some days it's bearable, some days it's worse. So because of that, he's like, hey, if this is so much discomfort for you, and he's like, I don't want it to be like a problem now that it's like start spreading more ulcers around where it's unbearable or causes more health issues, my surgery date has now been pushed up. So I had my original surgery date, and because we got COVID, it got pushed almost like a month and a half, two months later. Once I started developing this issue, it then transitioned into my doctor's like, hey, we need to kind of fast track you a little bit because we don't want this issue to spread. We don't want it to get worse. Like if you start having mul if one little tiny ulcer is causing you this much pain, imagine when it gets bigger or you have multiple ulcers. 
And he's like, I don't want to risk you having to go through that and me not have the availability to do the surgery for you. Or you have to go do it with somebody else. And he's like, I would prefer to take care of everybody. And surgeons are typically like that. If they do work on somebody, they prefer to do it themselves. And other surgeons prefer to not touch another surgeon's work unless absolutely necessary. Obviously, if there's no other way, that's fine. They do it. But every surgeon does things kind of differently ever so slightly and my surgeon he knows exactly what he did because he's done it thousands of times so it's just easier that way fast tracked me by several weeks thankfully so i am uh, not too far out but um i have to do my sky Reezy today so uh let's do this and this is a man's memory it's worse than a goldfish paul doesn't even know which side he shot his leg the other time. Did COVID hit you that strong? Pretty much. Da, 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 da. Can you check? No, because I have like I have the like the ones that come with me, like these, this like this one, right? Yeah. Yeah, I have them. That's fine. Stay. Okay, well I have the medication here. It looks good. There's no cracks, nothing. It looks clear, yellowish, doesn't look damaged, expiration date, December 2024. Uh, no, just COVID, but that was, at this point, like, yeah, on body injector looks good, door is open, no, like, Lights are blinking. I have my alcohol here, prep pads. I have some gauze, all this fun stuff. If I remember correctly, go through everything, prep pad, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so I'm going to alcohol my leg because I do it like three times because I am crazy. One of those days, huh? But I have the medication here. I'm going to start alcohol swabbing the bottom. Okay. Let that evaporate just ever so slightly. I have the on-body injector again, doors open, stickers are still on, no lights are blinking, everything is good. Okay, hold on, let me get to do it. Stick it straight down. Yeah. I heard sure the clicks. Really good. Then All close the, the door. Down. Clicked as well. Then check one more thing when you close the door. Not only check for a gap here, but check for a gap up front here, because that means that the cartridge isn't all the way in. Yeah, no, it looks good. No gaps anywhere. Without reading the instructions, the small one first, big one yeah. first. Big, big to small, yeah. Big to small. Oh, Got it. I always forget yeah, this. So, no, it's okay. So remember, um, let's see, how can we remember this? Because well, the small one activates it. Yeah, now I see that the small one has a little plastic strip that will remove the protection from the battery to activate it, so. There you go, yep. And then small one. Yep, and beep. Beeps, it's good. blinking blue. Okay. Yeah, that's good enough right there. I'm making sure the tegaderm's all nicely stuck on. I like to prop my leg up ever so slightly just because it helps just so any air bubbles don't go in and it hurts like hell. So, and now we begin. All right, push the button. Light is blinking green. Good. And I hear it going. Medication is being infused. Good. Bye. Mm -hmm. 
right? Why is it because of like the needles deeper in? No, the needle like when I push the button okay. is when the needle actually goes in. Okay, it didn't actually hurt that bad this time. I think it's like an air bubble maybe. That's the only thing I can think of. All right, it has finished. Solid green light. Now I'm going to start removing it and get my wax job in at the same time. Look pretty for me. <laughs> You're such a one. I have a lot of hair, don't judge me. Ow! <laughs> Today it's stuck on really well. It'd be funny if the needle went back in here. Oh. <laughs> and now it's done. Perfect. Um, I, they just sent me another one today. Or for with this shipment, out. I mean. He has a bump on his leg. I, still ha I have like three, so I'm good. The injection side looks good. A little raised bump, nothing big. A little bit of redness, but just like normal. So, yeah, it looks good. Now we wait for the transformation to vampire. Alrighty guys, so as you can see, I am now in bed, hanging out, just chilling. I am cuddling Yori, we are taking it very easy. The baby is asleep for her nap, and this is why I do my Skyreezy injections around this time, because with this, I have a good two hours to just relax and take it easy. The Skyreezy, at the beginning when I did it would actually like really like wear me out for the day I would just be super tired lagging thankfully it doesn't do that anymore very much but that's why we do it around this time so I can tell one thing that I do and I do this because I've had anaphylactic reactions and allergic reactions in the past to these biologic medications is for about three to five days before I do my injection I take just an over-the-counter antihistamine like I take Zizol and I just take that every single day for, th again, three to five days beforehand so that I have a good antihistamine level in my body. And that will just help any kind of allergic reactions, anything that could happen, that would help limit them quite a bit. So if you're worried about doing these injections or infusions or whatever it could be, that's something that you can definitely do. When I was on Remicade for years, right before my infusion, they would give me Benadryl and Solumedrol, which are anaphylactic reaction kits that they do. So all you medrols and steroid helps, you know, open up your throat and the Benadryl for, you know, antihistamines. So I just do it just in case. You never know. It just gives me peace of mind. And I've, again, with Skyreezy, it's a very safe drug and I've never had a single issue with it, thankfully. But guys, that is going to be it for this vlog. That is going to, this is the final time that I am with my uh, nurse ambassador from here on out. I will have another nurse ambassador. It's just not this one. She, Vivi, or she just is only for like the new patients. Not a big deal. I'll have another one if I need. But from here on out, babe, I'm flying solo. I'm flying. No. <laughs> Listen, I love dad jokes now. It's like my passion. Babe, I don't like those trees over there. They're shady. <laughs> I actually read up on a bunch of dad jokes so I can actually do this. You're so cringe. Yep, absolutely. This is part of being a father is dad jokes. That's That goes with it. Sorry. Yeah, guys. So next time, flying solo. No more nurses. I don't have to do the FaceTiming with them or anything like that. And this is a very simple process and it's easy. I can do it myself. No worries. So guys, that is going to be it. Please do not forget to like, share, and subscribe we truly appreciate it we want to spread as much awareness as possible we try to post every tuesday and every thursday so when you do subscribe hit that bell for the notifications every single time we post so guys as you can see janice is here finally we're just chilling in bed hanging out Exhausted. look at her shirt all for jackie right here she loves this movie who, who knows what this movie is comment below <laughs> So guys, that is going to be it. So for now, adieu and goodbye.